Hey guys, Mr. Heo here. Um, we have moved on in weather patterns to chapter two, lesson 2.3. So can warm air um, temperature contribute to massive floods? In this lesson, we're gonna reread part of the article, Disaster in California, with a focus on the science behind what led to the mega flood. Um, and this learning will add on to what we already know about what the recipe for warm weather um, rainstorm is. So just a quick recap from chapter one, we know that once they put the lake in, um, that the severities of the storms increased, which meant that um, there was more rainfall um, because there was more water vapor and because there was more water vapor, then um, there was more rain to fall. And that led us to chapter two, um, which is why is the amount of rain in Galetown different from storm to storm? So we looked at storms two, three, and four, and even those had different um, amounts of rainfall. Um, key concepts. We didn't learn any um, new key concepts um, in 2.2. Uh, um, these are still from 2.1, that the troposphere is the warmest at the surface and coldest at its highest point. And if an air parcel is warmer than the surrounding air, it'll rise. All right, guys, so 2.2. I'm sorry. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry, guys. We're on 2.3. I keep on saying 2.2. Oh, man. I hope that didn't confuse you too much. We're on Chapter 2, Lesson 2.3, okay? Activity number one. <clears throat> So in the last lesson, you read about a mega flood that happened in California in 1862. The flood happened because a series of huge rainstorms that occurred. Below is a set of weather events that caused the great flood of 1862. The list of weather events is not in the correct order. Put the events in order of what happened. Okay. So the warm air parcel rose into the troposphere and lost energy forming clouds as it rose. Severe flooding happened, energy transferred from the Earth's surface to the air parcel warming the air. The sun heated the surface of the Earth. A lot of rain fell. The air parcels reached, stopped when it reached the same temper as the surrounding air high in the troposphere. All right, so we need to think about like what we've done in this simulation. All right, so the first thing that happens is that energy is transferred from the sun to the surface. Okay. Oh, that's his energy transfer from the Earth's surface to the air parcel. So that's not first. All right, so the sun heated the surface of the Earth. So that energy came down to that surface, right? Okay, so then what happens in the simulation? I've got to remember. Okay, okay. then the surface starts um, transferring its energy to the Earth. Okay. Let's see. So once that started happening, and then the, the air parcel had to be a higher temperature than the surrounding air, and it started to rise. So the warm air parcel rose in the troposphere and lost energy forming clouds as it rose. That looks like, okay, um, severe flooding happened. That, that was kind of at the end. A lot of rain fell. Yeah, that did. But then the air parcel stopped when it reached the same temperature as the surrounding air high in the troposphere. Then a lot of rain fell and severe flooding happened. All right, so let's go back into the reading. Um, I had alluded to this in 2.2 um, that I was not gonna go over um, the science behind because I knew we were gonna do it in 2.3. So we're gonna reread the section, what caused the great flood of 1862? As we're reading, we're gonna answer this question. Why did the warm temperatures lead to more rainfall? What happens when an air parcel rises higher in the troposphere? And when does the air parcel stop losing energy? All right, so I'm gonna scroll down because I know that it was towards the bottom. And here we are. The Great Flood of 1862 was caused by a series of powerful storms that began over the Pacific Ocean. These storms were so strong because local temperatures were higher than normal. The winter of 1862 was unusually warm in California. Out in the ocean, both the ocean surface water and the air above it were warmer than usual. The higher temperatures caused more ocean water to evaporate into the air. 
these warm air parcels full of water vapor rose high into the troposphere above California. In fact, because they were warmer than usual, they rose higher in the troposphere than the cooler air parcels that caused normal rainstorms. As they traveled up through the colder parts of the troposphere, energy transferred from the parcels to the surrounding air, lowering the temperature of the air in the parcels. The parcels cooled until they had the same temperature as the surrounding air, causing the water vapor inside to condense into liquid water. The higher they rose, the more energy the parcels lost and the more water vapor condensed. The clouds that formed from these air parcels were full of liquid water that would soon fall as rain. All right, so let's go back to our guiding questions. So why did the warm temperatures lead to more rainfall? I gotta go back to this. Okay, the warm, let's see, causing, ah, the higher temperatures caused more ocean water to evaporate into the air. And then what happens when an air parcel rises higher in the troposphere? So I'm sorry, I'm reading back through this. So um, they rose higher. So what happens when an air parcel rises higher? In fact, they were warmer than cooler. And surrounding air, lowering. The higher they rose, the more energy they lost, and the more water vapor condensed right? Because if they had more water to begin with, they're going to be able to raise higher. Um, and if they raise higher, then they're going to be able to condense even more. And so when does it stop losing energy? And then the parcels cooled until they had the same the same temperature as the surrounding air, causing water vapor inside to condense into liquid water. All right, so that leads us to where we're at right now, pattern, which is something we observe to be similar over and over. So we saw a pattern of more of higher temperatures, which led to more evaporation. And once there was more evaporation, there could have been, there was that ability for that parcel to, to get higher. And then as that happened, we were able um, to see that those water vapor could condense into rainfall. And because there was more water vapor, there was more condensation after, after those parcels rose, which fell as rain. All right, guys, let's move on to the simulation to see how this works.